Hello, and welcome to the Legends of Valsia. I am Llama Chomp. I will be playing Harbeck Iron Fist tonight. He's a dwarf. He likes beer. Above me is Eversor. Hi, I'm Eversor. I'll be playing Brieg, who is a insane and recently very angry gnomish arcane trickster. Above him is Babs. Okay, I'm Babs. I'll be playing Din Blade, the human ranger who was raised by wolves. Across from me over there is Jima. Hey, I'm Gurgentius. Oh, I'm Nima. I'm playing Gurgentius. I'm the happy-go-lucky human warrior. Above him is Flick. Hey, I'm Flick. I'll be playing Tabarin, the human warlock and caster of five magics. Somehow, maybe. And holding very, out. very, very still in the top corner is Lolash. Watch him be a ventriloquist. I'm very good at this. Hi, I'm Lolash. I am the DM and responsible for all the terrible things that will happen in this campaign, but also all of the good things and the pleasing moments and and all of that stuff. Also, I am really unwell today, and so I am not on camera because I am swaddled and a big baby. So you get to see a still picture of my face today instead of a moving one. I hope that doesn't detract from the experience. Um, last week on the Legends of Valsia, we uh, we need a recap, and I believe that uh, Brieg is going to take this one. I think that Eversor is going to do it, not Brieg, but that's okay. okay. Um, so last week we, uh, well, so two weeks ago we had a very interesting encounter <clears throat> with someone that we assume is one of the bears of the Orkdras. Uh After that interesting encounter, we woke up, appeared in this forest that Brieg, after giving it a little look around, recognized as being a forest just to the south of Terran, which is the town that houses the asylum where he was tortured for most of his life. Um, it's also the asylum that it's holding our current target, which is Shadow... Shadow's brother? Brother, right? Um, yes. Who we are intending to rescue. Uh, so we spent the entirety of our last session thinking really hard about how we were going to do that. It was basically three hours of us going, what if we... No, but maybe we should... But what if we... And eventually we settled on. Um, a few of the party members managed to get into Terran after an interaction with some of the elven guards uh, and set up in an inn that's weirdly enough run by a human, not an elf. So they're inside doing some reconnaissance and observation. Uh, that would be Gergintius, Harbeck, and Tabarin. While Din and Brieg have headed into the forests north of Terran, watching the river that is one of the main ways that Terran is supplied, hoping to find uh, a way to perhaps stow themselves aboard one of those supply ships to get in and get into the asylum. Uh, and yeah, and I don't know if anything else interesting happened. Did anything else interesting Still think happen? poop bomb is the way to go. We right. discussed for a moment collapsing the cavern that holds all of Terran's waste matter and trying to force all of the poop <laughs> back up through the sewage system and just flooding the whole town in poop as a distraction. It, Harbeck is very excited plan C. to branch out into alchemy from brewing and apply chemistry to making violent exothermic reactions. That sounds very fun. So that's that's also, plan C, is Har Harbeck will make a bomb and we will blow up the poop. What was plan B? <laughs> it's, you just called it plan C because uh, you don't want it to actually happen, right? Like you would have picked well, a letter further that, in the alphabet if you thought it was reasonable. Idea. So I, I believe in my mind the order of the plan is plan A is stow aboard a ship, sneak in, free the guy, sneak out. Plan B is Tabarin impersonates the like leader of the asylum guy. We kill him, and Tabarin impersonates him, and somehow gets us in that way. And Plan C is we blow up the poop. Oh, I 
thought Plan B was See, great. And, and, and I really look at Plan B as the option, and Plan C is merely the oh crap, we're stuck in here, let's blow this place up, and hopefully <laughs> oh, we can get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, it, it, always, it always gets all the way down to plan, you know, D or Z or whatever it is, which is just try to kill everyone and hope we don't die. Wh- yeah. Which Knock is on the front door and start shooting people. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Let's be so honest, we're not going to do often. plan A, B, or C. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> but we're going to try really also, hard so that when plan D happens, we don't have to feel so bad about it. Um, okay. Because right? we tried really hard to do something. Din is basically <laughs> was asleep last week, but Din is basically following along, waiting for plan C to happen because she's really excited <laughs> about poop bomb. <laughs> <Exactly. Okay. laughs> it hasn't occurred to her yet that if that idea works, she will have to wade through the poop in order to accomplish their mission. <laughs> um, so wading through poop is better than swimming submerged in poop, which is an experience that Brieg has had in his life. It was not pleasant yeah. at all. <laughs> okay, so last week we ended with uh, Brieg and Tabrin having a conversation just outside town, relaying some information, talking about what was going on. Uh, Tabrin told Brieg that it's a very predictable sort of place and that they can probably formulate a plan around timings. Brieg told Tabrin that the river has been reasonably clear and they agreed to meet up every two days. Uh, a word of warning for viewers, the next little bit of this D&D campaign may become a little tedious, depending on what the party decides to do. So, let's get started, shall we? The first group of two days as Brieg returns to Din and Tabrin returns to town. What are you all going to do? Um, so Harbeck had been making cider to try and win the elves over to drinking a brewed drink instead of a fermented one. Um, yes. Which I guess is also fermented, but let's not split that particular hair. Um, and in the time between doing that was trying to sneakily make explosives. Um, that is correct. So, I don't remember if we rolled the alchemy checks for making bombs, but um, that's, um, that's what Harvick's working on. He's drink and we're highly successful. Right? He's very yeah, content so to spend... you made the side up. Yeah. Um, very content to spend time in the inn trying to figure out what this innkeeper's deal is because it's super weird that he is here and see if he's excited about cider and make bombs. At some point I will want to talk to Tavern okay. about how to remotely trigger the bombs because I haven't I have no idea how I make that work. But probably Tavern can do it with magic, so that's fine. Magic. Okay. Um so an idea. Well, like, you're you're paying attention to the innkeeper. Are you like sneakily spying on him or just trying to gauge who he is? And I what he's doing? am just being jovial, friendly, drunk, happy Harbeck <laughs> and just talking his ear off and trying to pick out any snippets. Like not actually not not prying, not digging in. We have you know, if, if nothing comes out and I need to start prying in two or three days, maybe I'll start. But at this point, I am just throwing lots of words at him and analyzing the words that come back uh, to see if I can sort out why he's still here or how he's paying for his inn. Like, looking for those specific details, but not trying too hard. Just, just being his friend and talking to him and being excited about my cider and seeing if anything slips in. Okay. Uh, roll a insight check for me, please. Um, and then I'm also going to get you to roll an alchemy check because you are sneakily working on explosives at the same time. This is not a field that you are skilled in and uh, you're going to be working with restrictions, so yeah. I'm going to give you disadvantage on the alchemy check. Okay. I have uh, proficiency with the tools, but it isn't my, it isn't like my artificer focus or whatever. Yeah. 
the the other concern is that you're trying to do it sneakily with limited resources. Right. So we'll go with a with a disadvantage on that check. What is everybody else doing? Um, I imagine Breed and Din, you guys have it real boring. <laughs> Din is hunting. Exactly. Breed is watching the river. Right. That's yeah, and so. I need to refresh and my on a very team. small scale, practicing now with his with his ring that he has figured out he can do all sorts of cool things with. I don't want to yeah, do anything so, like big and obvious that's going to catch yeah. passers-by attention, but, you know, little stuff. I'm going to work with it. Um, Dan, you, you you go off doing your hunting thing, which you always do while you're in the forest, so I'll get a survival check from you. Um, but every now and then when you're back with Brig and, you know, you're having a little conversation or a little chat or or you sneak back on him and spy on him briefly because you're inquisitive and like to be sneaky um or he always catches you because he's incredibly perceptive now for some no. reason even though he's no incredibly dice perceptive. um that's an awful role <laughs> <laughs> uh you see him doing like really weird things with water like you always knew he was magic but he's like picking up a disc of water and spinning it in the air he's like without touching it um, which is weird in itself because it's water, it's not a solid thing, but he's like picking it up and spinning it around and forming balls and cubes and like picking water up out of the river and stretching it out in like a foot high wall, you know, a couple of feet in front of him um, and then, you know, putting it back in the river. He's doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things with water. So um, depending on how Din reacts to that, you guys might want to have a conversation. But Harvick. Your insight check first. Uh, there is something... You... Like, you start off being jovial because you're a nice guy and you want to be chummy with him to see what his deal is, but you quickly find yourself almost enthralled with him. Like, you, you and he, or both of you, resonate with this same sort of uh, energy. You, you just feel like he's a long lost brother after, a, after spending a, only a short time with him. There's something which like in itself doesn't feel strange, but when you step away at night to work on your explosive devices in the basement, you go, that guy is really cool. Why do I think he's so cool? Like, I've known him for a day. Right. And, and it, it's, it's strange in that sense. Harbeck, you're spying on him. Don't be his friend. Come on, Harbeck. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, as far as the bomb making is going, you're not finding the required materials you need. You can't okay. find a couple of things that will I'll, react together yet. I'll Talk to Tabrin about talking to Din about finding stuff for their next meeting. Okay. Uh, Din, you hunt successfully, and you and Bree can eat like kings and queens. No food poisoning. Yay! Yay. No poisonous berries this time. <laughs> We're um, not stuck with good no berries. berries. <laughs> or bad berries. Din, did you want to have a conversation with Brieg about what oh, he's God. doing at all? Or, or are you just happy to sneakily observe? Did you make the river magic? No, not, not the entire river. Do you remember when we found this ring? Yeah. Wait, is um, that the one that we didn't give back to the... No, Tabern has that no, one. No, Taber Tabern has that one. But I think it's similar, and I'm curious what, what he could accomplish with it. So I, while I was sitting here extraordinarily bored, watching the river, hoping for a boat to come by, um, I this was... This was your plan. I want you to remember that this was your plan. Yes, I, under I understand that. Um, that doesn't make it any less boring. But So while I was sitting here um i decided that i i try to see if i could gain any more control over the ring We're, we've had a few moments where i've i made it do things um but i wanted to see if i could you know, control it more directly 
and I, I had a major breakthrough the other day and, and now look at some of the things that I can do and then I'll play with the water <laughs> playing with the water and I'll like can you hit people make with it, it like snake up and I um yes as a matter, as a matter of fact I can well not I, I've had a few moments where it didn't work the way that I wanted it to but with much more um, frequent success now I can I can even like freeze it and I can watch this and I'll I'll cast this like I pull a pull a few like balls of water out and freeze them and throw them across the, the thing and I, I I could I think I could use this to do some to make some mayhem but also perhaps much more importantly for what we're trying to do now um, uh, come, come stand close to me here well, I, I okay. want to show you something and then I will cast this on both of us and then say we can now breathe under the water and I will like sink down under the river for for a little while to demonstrate I can breathe underwater? Great. Jump in and try it out. It's a fascinating experience. Didn't get confused. Because <laughs> breathing in water sounds impossible, but you really trust breathe. <laughs> okay. I'm going in the water, but this sounds scary. <laughs> Then you go in the water and you hold your breath as you are used to doing. It sounds like Mini Saw has you. woken up and is gone. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna be uh, absent for just a moment here, guys. That's okay. Um, Bye, Mini. <laughs> so uh, you, you hold your breath for a little while because you're underwater and that feels natural. And eventually, you can't hold your breath any longer. Do you stay underwater and breathe, or do you surface? <laughs> that is the question. Um, I'm going to get you to roll a wisdom saving well, throw to see if you can keep your head underwater. Because you trust Brieg, but oh, he wants you to breathe the water. Go up. <laughs> You manage to stay underwater and take in a big gulp of river water and <laughs> you breathe it fine. It's just yeah. like breathing air. Strange sensation, I, but... I didn't drown. Yeah. Which is nifty. I start swimming around <laughs> under the water for a really <laughs> long time. Okay. Um, Tabern and Nima so, in the town. What's going on? I so, really like. I have been. Oh, go ahead. Just say, I really Actually, like to figure go out. First. Okay, go first. Because okay. because I'm gonna hand you something. Uh, I've okay. been plotting down the guards and their weaknesses, and uh, I've been, you know, once I've gotten all the information down, I'm gonna hand it to Tavern so that he can spread that news to everybody else in the party, uh, so we can. Uh, formulate a better plan of action since we know weak points now. That's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> awesome. So Nima's identified old war wounds on elves who, you know, might move more slowly or uh, who, you know, have lower levels of archery skill or who can't fight as effectively or who are physically weaker. Um, the particular one of interest that, as he hands that to me, that I want to look at is the guard we encountered outside of um, what's his face's hut to check in. Um, oh right, um, he has no his... visible weaknesses. He seems to be okay. uh, uh, more powerful Stout, than like, Nima. Velocia. He's okay. 
he he's like when Nima does his special thing on that dude, uh, he can he can see that, you know, he is at least as strong as Nima, if not stronger, um, and probably has more training. So, uh, so it's a, yeah. a double double right there on that. So what Tavern wants to do. The first question he has is the distance as a bird flies from the inn to Vlosha's hut, house. Is it 500 feet or less? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to... From your window, which is basically there, you can draw direct line of sight kind of to Velocia's house okay so what I'd like to do is I'm going to cast my um, create portal what is it called find it from ba from my room arcane gate to the outside of his hut but I want to orient put the orientation of those portals so that I step out and I'm like standing right at the the house. So from the other side, you can't see it. Does that make sense? So there'd be like a one foot gap between the portal and the house. And from one side, you can't see it based on the description of the, on the description spell. of the spell. Yeah. Um, so you basically then, you want to come out pressed up against the wall of the house. So that unless somebody right. else is pressed up against the wall of the house, they can't see the portal. Right. And I want to do this when there's typically no guards there, like the first time we came, or there was just the one guard there, if I remember correctly. Is there someone yep. posted there always? There appears to be someone outside his house at all times, um, but they are typically on the front side of the house, somewhere around here. Uh, okay. I'll just click so you can see somewhere around here. Whereas okay. you could drop the you could drop the portal over here for practice. Um, okay. And you would be outside of his line of sight. So the goal here is to cast that, and then I have three minutes of invisibility because I can mm -hmm. cast greater invisibility three times, in which I want to investigate around the house as quietly as possible um i want to see is there another way in um if i'm feeling particularly daring checking to see if the front door is locked i want to find a way to get access in so that we could ambush from the inside if we decide okay. to go that route uh Roll me two checks. I want a stealth check to see how sneaky you manage to be on the first day that you do this. Yeah, uh, and I also really. want I also want an investigation <laughs> check as okay. you poke around and see what you can see. I see a mini so Ooh. Can't get much That's better really than that for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then what was the other one? An investigation? Yeah. I was going to give you advantage on the stealth check, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Okay. Um, so busy being very quiet. Pop out, yeah, as you pop out and you be super sneaky and round the front side of the house and see the guard you kind of lose your nerve a little bit and lose your focus and before you know it the three minutes is up and you have to go back through the portal before you're seen uh, all right you you get a bit of a look around the house it's round it only has one door it has a window on the eastern side um it occurs to you that you only require line of sight to use your portal if his window was open, you could probably portal could directly in. into his house. Right. So that'll um, be that'll be the next 
bit of timing that I'll spend is just really observing if that window ever becomes open and what time of day that it does. Okay. Uh, is your mic anything else that anyone wants to get done? done? Llama shop. I'm trying to type really quiet. Sorry. <laughs> it's because <laughs> the mic. You need, you need to get that new mic stand. sitting on his desk. Yeah. So all you hear is thump, 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 thump. <laughs> There's no way around you, it. All right, you, so. You lost your mic stand or something? No, it just, um, it's not important. <laughs> okay. The, the boom can be a bit difficult to use. So, uh, anything else anyone wants to get day, done day one? No? Like, we've, we're all pretty comfortable. Um, I don't know if um, you could probably freak. go out into the mm -hmm. wild and pick some more things just because okay. that's part of the the story that the we cow. have fabricated um but i also um, want to look for things that might be helpful um in this bomb making all right can i get a survival check from you as well then uh in case you missed it breed din went underwater like you asked and she held her breath for the longest time, and then she couldn't hold her breath anymore, but she trusted you, so she breathed in, and then she was like a kitten with a ball of yarn. She was fascinated by the fact that she can now breathe water and was swimming around and stayed down there far longer than she needed to. Um, <laughs> but she definitely does not appreciate that <laughs> metaphor. What? Yes, yes, she she hates cats. <laughs> <laughs> a side effect? She was like a puppy like, with a new toy. <laughs> do you get diarrhea after you have that spell? Or. <laughs> I'd yeah. imagine there's so much water in you. Uh, it's <laughs> magical, however, so. I'm imagining the it's scene from The Abyss where they're like breathing the liquid oxygen suspension. And then mm. they go back to breathing air and they have to like breathe all of that out. It would not be good coming out oh. of water. Like, if you're actually, like, sucking water into your lungs and not just magically not breathing, transitioning back to land would no, be the, uncomfortable. The I, magic I is the water, like, when it's taken in through the mouth, becomes air. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to bring that out. It just, it just oxygenates. It's, magi it's magic. It's magic, Lama. It's uncomfortable. Magic. Those yeah. magicians did good work. Right. Design you don't like sprout little little gill, gills on the side, and that's how you're breathing. No, no, yeah. nothing. <laughs> Quite so ridiculous. Okay, day one is over. Day two. Um, anything that wants to get done during the day before Breed goes to meet up with Tabron. What are you guys doing? Any open window? No open window today. No. Did uh, so today. So Gergentius is going to help corroborate his, you know, assistant boy duties and uh, mm -hmm. assist Harvick in his quest to make bombs and be, you know, the, the merchant dude. <laughs> I'm going to continue befriending the innkeeper. I might even bother learning his name today. Uh, which I don't know. I don't know if we heard it last time. I'm pretty sure we haven't heard it today, and I want to write it in my notes. Um, <laughs> going to continue working on. I don't know how much attention the cider needs, or if it just needs time. Uh, but if it doesn't need attention, I'm going to work on my other. Uh, I need to like do a round of spells. I'm pretty low, and then okay. I'll spend some time. Working on my secret side project, which is definitely not to blow up the cistern and make the town flood with poop. Uh, so his name is Art. His name is Arta, and uh, if you reach that point in your relationship where you don't remember his name, but you also know him too well to ask it. And it's yeah. just super awkward, and you have to hope that it comes hey, up in a conversation. And, and, and since no one ever comes time. into his inn, I can't just, like, listen for it and then pretend I knew it all along. <laughs> super hockey. Uh, yeah. You keep, no, you keep no. trying to be like, 
so let me tell you about the origins of the name Harbeck and like you know trying to get this conversation started and he just never bites how much do humans care about the history of their names <laughs> please <laughs> Please tell me your name. All right, uh, Harbick, you can do all of the appropriate roles required for spells. I don't need to guide you through that. You know how that works, correct? I don't remember the details on how many levels I get. It's just the roll minus 10, right? Yeah. Is that yeah, many spell levels? Yep, yeah, the roll minus 10. It's how many spell levels you can create in a day. Uh, so while you're doing that, uh, and Gagintius is helping with the brewing and generally being a porter, uh, Tabron is staring out his window and then in the afternoon going to meet Brieg uh, and Din and Brieg uh, you've got the day um, Din you managed to rustle up enough food yesterday that you don't need to hunt for a couple of days so is there anything you want to do with the day or are you just going to go out in the wild anyway I I'm wondering where I get a super fancy ring so that I can do magic -y things. And still trying to figure out how to make my tattoo be helpful. But mostly just like hanging out in the forest and playing with my wolf and killing time. Like, I'm the <laughs> least helpful part of let's watch this river and see what happens. Because I'm like so ADD. I'm like, ooh, a river. Yeah. Ooh, a rock. Ooh, a shiny thing. <laughs> Breathe. Um, <clears throat> so you're paying attention to the river and you are doing anything else? Is there anything else you're doing or are you relegated to just staring at the river because Din is terrible at it? Um, so I, I learned this other cool thing that I can do. So I will spend some time making sure that I can make that work whenever I want it to. Okay. Uh, while I stare at the river and I will grow increasingly frustrated that it's been like four days and not a single boat has come down here I really hope that they would receive supplies more frequently than this okay the end. well your prayers are going to be answered because at about midday um, oh, a barge comes down the river there are you know various supplies some barrels and sacks and things um, there is also an elf um, he is bound and gagged and blindfolded sitting in the middle of the raft okay. there so is as soon as, two... I, hmm? as soon as I notice it I you know I make myself scarce I don't want them to see, yep. see me but go on uh, so yeah, he's, he's bound and gagged, sitting in the middle of the raft. There are two armed elven guards who make your blood boil because they're clearly asylum workers. Um, they have a green sash instead of a blue sash, which is what most of the military in Thacon wear. Uh, and he is just sitting there. He seems completely peaceful and calm. Uh, How... About how far from my hiding spot is this uh, barge? Well, it's like, coming down the river, the river, and really, and uh, the river is not super wide. Probably, I don't know, sixty feet across, and the barge is obviously keeping to regularly, like relatively the middle. Okay. So I'm just. Thinking here, so how how bound and gagged is he? Like manacles wrapped entirely in chains from head to foot, just tied with his hands behind his back. Um, so his hands are tied behind his back with uh, some kind of cloth. You can't really tell what it is from this sort of range. Um, same with his his gag and the bindings around his eyes. It's all cloth. Um, so I, I like find myself overcome with the idea of anyone being 
put into the asylum when there is even the slightest chance that I could do literally anything about it. So from my hiding spot, I am going to attempt to mage hand off his bindings. Okay. Uh, I think I can like pick locks and stuff with it, but yeah, so like without making myself real obvious, I'm going to try to mage hand the knots holding his his hands bound off. Um, okay. Which I ah. assume is going to be one of these. A sleight of hand? It would be correct. Minimum result is a 25. Okay. You that. can't undo the knots without it making it obvious that you would undo them. Like, the, the cloth would fall away from his eyes and mouth. Um, and even his hands, you know, they're bound behind his back and he's sitting on the raft, the cloth would fall to the ground. Elves are fairly perceptive types. You do manage to loosen them significantly, and when you start to loosen them, you see his head sort of incline ever so slightly and look almost directly at you. Um, which is really creepy because he's blindfolded. And you're undoing his things with a mage hand from range, from a hiding spot. So, that's very, very creepy. Uh, well, I will get them as, as loose as I can without making it obvious that something has happened. And then I will, you know, give him like a slight nod from my hiding spot, and I have no idea if that is something that he can perceive or not. And then I will cast invisibility on myself and follow them, because I want to see what happens. <laughs> Breed is going to follow them. Yes, I'm, yeah, just invisible walking kind of the the river looks like it's pretty well forested right up to the edge here so just mm-hmm. like right behind that first row of trees so I can keep an eye on them as they go okay um roll a perception check okay Oh, also sorry. Twenty. Yeah, but... You have a tiny U. Um, <laughs> and he's, <laughs> he's shirtless, which I think is not supposed to be on Twitch, so I will make it so only his head is on Twitch. Uh, so <laughs> it's very interesting what happens next. Um, I will do my best to explain it. So. The first thing that you see with your perception check, and this is the important bit, is just above where the cloth is binding his wrists behind his back, you see something start to materialize out of his flesh. Um, uh, Upon closer inspection, it looks like the bindings that were binding his hands are... ensorcelled in some way. They have runes on them. But you see a gold sort of armlet or something almost grow out of his wrist. Um, It's inlaid with like brilliant emeralds. Um, And at the time that you see this, uh, you also notice that the guards have noticed this um unfortunately the guards have noticed a little too late because directly in front of the barge uh a pillar of earth rises up out of the riverbed displacing the water and sending it splashing up on the banks and the raft stops or the barge stops dead in the middle of the river and you see two tendrils of earth snake out from the pillar and bind both of the elves on the raft. Uh, A few moments later, the tendrils of earth that have bound those two elves drag the elves into the pillar, like straight through it, like it wasn't even solid. And then the pillar disappears back down into the, the riverbed. 
That was cool. <laughs> that is nuts. <laughs> so he's our friend, right? He's uh, on our team. Well, you know, dangerous people get put in the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be dangerous. I am going to uh, continue observing. So the you know, big pillar of stone stopped the barge. Both of the guards are now gone. Um, That's a polite way to put it, yes. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to kind of hunker down and continue observing him. Um, Din, you return back to the clearing where Brieg was. He's not there anymore. Brieg. Brieg, if you're dead, you need to shout. If you're hiding, don't say anything. Crap. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm gonna look around for danger. Okay. Roll a uh, roll a survival check for me. Okay. <coughs> yeah, you easily pick up his track. He's been traveling down river, parallel with the river. Because I'm tracking you. Okay. Um, uh, Breed, while you sit there and continue to watch, um, you are shaken from your stupor and reverie of what just happened by the fact that the earth at your feet seems to be growing uh, outwards towards the raft creating somewhat of a gangplank and uh, the man on the raft stands and while remaining completely blindfolded and with his hands mostly bound behind his back he steps off the barge while it is in transit directly onto the earthen gangplank and starts to walk directly at you. What would you like to do? I will... <laughs> I will... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna... Roll the dice here and dismiss my invisibility spell and just kind of, you know, step out of hiding and on to where he is, you know, out into the path where he is walking. Okay. Um, so he continues walking along the earthen gangplank, which recedes after him, um, which is a really cool looking effect. Uh, the bridge sort of falling away into the the river as he crosses it right behind his footsteps um and he reaches the bank and steps down onto the soil and uh he just sits down and leans against a tree like right in front of you and he doesn't say anything but he seems to be breathing deeply like he's smelling the fresh sea air for the first time, only you're in the woods. So smelling the fresh earthy woody smells of the forest. Okay. Um, is the pillar still holding the barge in place? No, the barge has continued on down the river. Uh, so as soon as that, like when I, when I see the barge start to move think that I want it to not move okay. because I might want to use it. So I'm going to um, make the water not be under the barge anymore. That's my plan. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go big with my, uh, 
with my new use of this ring. 28 is not less than 18. Sorry, that's really long. I'm going to part the water around the barge and it just, you know, just like set it down on a dry spot in the middle of the river so I can use that later. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you have about 10 minutes. Right. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> and then I will say very quietly to the guy, um, is, is this your first time heading to the asylum? You can tell he's smiling, even though he's still gagged. Um, he has that sort of amused smile going on behind the cloth gag. Uh, I will mage hand the gag off. He says, well, that was very kind of you. Uh, he's speaking in Elvish, by the way, which you understand, I believe. Yes, I, I speak Elvish. Okay. Um, Din, it's at about this time that as you're sort of tracking Breed through the undergrowth, you see him standing in front of a bound elven man who's sitting up against a tree. Uh, you didn't see any of the going-ons leading up to this. You just see Breed standing in front of an elf who is currently tied up, leaning against a tree. Um, I'm going to draw my weapon. Okay. That's all right, Din. Did you catch him? This is... What did he do? It's sort of a rescue... Who's rescuing who? I'm rescuing you? Are you in trouble? No, I... <laughs> I am... Never I am it. kind of rescuing him. I'm not actually sure how much he needed my help. Then why tie however. him up? Oh, he was already bound. I'm... Slowly and with great consideration, removing those bindings. Din hears gibberish and Breeg hears, you have nothing to fear from me. Uh, I will approach and like finish unbinding his hands and let him take off his own blindfold. I assume that he will. Okay. When he takes off his blindfold, something unusual immediately presents itself. Um, his features are clearly fey. They're clearly sort of elven, but he doesn't look like any else you've ever seen. Um, his skin is much darker than the elves, who are typically very pale, and his eyes are a brilliant emerald green. Uh, and it's kind of strange, like you couldn't tell from on the boat when he was bound and had cloth wrapped around his hands and his face, but he's he's not a typical elf. Um, so didn't you use a, a similar description to describe Shadow? Or am I making that up? Shadow's half no, elf. Shadow was Shadow was, was half elf. Um, oh. and incredibly pale. Uh, this guy is darker skinned. He's, he's dark. And, uh, I just remember yeah. clear, clearly elf, but not like a typical elf. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know who you are or what your association with this place is, but it's my intention to get in to the asylum and liberate someone from within. Um, <sighs> I 
he sort of he looks at you strangely um and just says one word in elvish which din doesn't understand at all but brig it's why um well my motivations are numerous, but I suppose the most pressing re- answer to why is because it's the brother of a good friend of ours, and we need his help. The um, funny-looking elf person turns and looks at Din and says something that Din doesn't understand at all. Um, Br- Brig, you here? She's a child of the forest, isn't she? As literally as any human could be, raised by wolves. But her companion is a brother, as far as she's concerned. Is he talking to me? Uh, more about you. He called you a child of the forest. It seemed like an accurate oh. description to me. He we said do. something else unintelligible to Din. And Brig, you hear. More than you know, I think. There are an unfortunate abundance of things that I don't know. That comes from being so young. Is is Brig also speaking Elvish? Yes. So I don't understand any part of this conversation? No. You're it's like watching two I don't know. It's like some language you don't being speak on a train in a foreign subtitles. country overhearing yeah. and, like other people talking. Okay. Yes. Basically that's what's going on. Uh thank you for helping. welcome. I could stand and watch while anyone was placed in that place. The funny looking elf um, sort of turns to Din and sort of with a come hither look in his eyes, he's actually gorgeous um he sort of beckons you towards him with one of his now free hands um okay (laughs) uh you gonna head towards him (laughs) I, I will say in common. Brig is very calm, I, and usually if it's Gary, Brig is not very calm. So, uh, based on that, I'm just common, gonna blindly I trust the stranger. <laughs> um, Din. Yeah. One of the I, things you do notice is Aryan oh, is over there. A little bit of disconnecty stuff going on. Um, Din. One of the things you notice is. Um, Ayan is very cautious around strange people and is also a very good judge of character. In fact, you trust Ayan. Most of the time, it's he who decides who your friends are, not you, because he sometimes doesn't like the smell of people. Um, and he's your brother and your protector and your friend. Uh, but he is clearly quite happy to be approaching this particular elf. Uh, he is even wagging his tail, which is something that he very, very rarely does. He's, um, he seems to be very pleased. Uh, as you approach the strange-looking elf, 
Um, he stands to his full height. And now, um, for the first time, Din and Bree, you get to sort of see him at full height because he's no longer bound and has sort of stretched out. And uh, he stands um, about seven and a half foot tall. That's a big elf. Uh, which is very I'm odd sure because um, <laughs> because elves are typically in the six foot range. So uh, he is he is kind of gigantic. And as you approached in, um, he leans down and uh, places one hand on one of your hands and gives you a very light kiss on the forehead, and then says in a language that neither of you understand a phrase that feels it just feels right like when you hear something and you know it's very positive even though you don't speak the language it's just the intonation and the way it's said it just leaves you with a sense of calm and he turns and walks directly into the tree he was leaning against and disappears and with that we'll come back to the reactions and what happens next on our next episode of the legends of valsia if you're watching on twitch we'll be back in about three minutes if you're watching on youtube the next episode will be up when llama gets it up they we'll see sprints. you very very shortly yeah but don't that's not <laughs> i can't believe don't do that we we both did it